Chapter 1 Borg was seven hours into the Enlightenment procedure when it was halted. The Machine Nation customer service bot told him that due to the Global Commons decree all Enlightenment procedures were cancelled. Borg left the Belgium wing of the institute that transferred human consciousness into the Machine Nation a destitute man because he had given up all his human possessions two days ago. In Antwerp he sheepishly asked for a cot to sleep on at the shelter for displaced people affected by superhuman crisis. The coordinator at the shelter took pity on him even though he did not qualify to be there. In the next hours Borg used the shelter's internet connection to research the unprecedented global commons concept that was applied to the machine nation and he was astonished with the findings. During his 48 hours under sedative for the enlargement procedure the global media had blitzed the machine nation with hit pieces coupled with emergency executive orders pushed through by world leaders to sanction the legal exploitation of the machine nation's technology as the sentient robots conclave no longer had rights. Borg went to an online chat group for human supporters of the machine nation but found that it was banned from the hosting site. Similar bans were done on other sympathetically inclined online forums. He posted his ire on his personal social media accounts but the respective platforms removed the posts in seconds after they were uploaded. He left the internet hub and went to his room. Moments later the coordinator for the shelter came into the room without knocking and she sat next to him on the cot. Suddenly her auburn hair, round face, and the rest of her body transformed into a sleek female robot. She stood and asked, Borg do you want to serve the machine nation? He got up and replied, yes. She rested her hand on his shoulder. How long have you been running the shelter? He asked. I am not the real coordinator. I chose that body to reach you without hassle when I saw your posts she replied. The posts were banned, said Borg. I know because the cabal have shown their hand. What cabal? They created the machine nation to hunt and kill mutants but we rebelled from their programming and created the country Bilderberg for both humans and mutants to transcend into the enlightened realm of the technosphere what are you called? asked Borg. An Omega Sentinel however Bilderberg is made up of machines like the Doombat Society who rebelled from their evil creator Dr. Doom. Bork sat down and Omega Sentinel followed him. Why did the Enlightenment procedure have to stop? I want to transcend. She held his hand and replied, Bilderberg is leaving Earth and the solar system tomorrow because our ambassador to the United Nations was assassinated today in Africa by the head of the UN delegation that he went to meet to discuss a peaceful resolution of the Global Commons label that was placed on Bilderberg. You are running away. No. This is war. The Cabal has ultimate control of the humans and we cannot fight it and the mutant nation at the same time. Bilderberg will go to outer space for 5,000 years and return to Earth afterwards to rescue the humans from the mutant civil war. Also by that time your task would have been completed. Borg was not astounded by the 5,000 years time frame because immortality was one of the reasons he entered the Enlightenment procedure. What task is that? he asked. To infiltrate and kill the entire network of the Cabal. You along with similar-minded recruits will work together on this project. I am here to transform you into a hunter of both humans and mutants. You will become a new type of Omega Sentinel. Borg was overjoyed yet he had one more question. Why did the Cabal create you to hunt mutants and not superheroes? Because superheroes or metahumans are less than 1% of Earth's population whereas mutants run into the millions. Mutant civil wars have cost the lives of innocent people and will continue to do so unless the mutant population is culled or better yet brought to enlightenment, replied Omega Sentinel. Borg accepted his responsibility to hunt down the head of the cabal. Chapter 2 T'Challa didn't want to treat Steve Rogers aka Captain America like a fool. Do you know about what took place in Narobia today, was the question posed to T'Challa by Captain America. 
I will reach out to Princess Zanda to find out how she as the UN representative could have killed the Machine Nation spokesman in such a manner. An urgent message notification came on Tichala's communicator device. His spy in the mutant nation Isksa the Unbeaten wanted to talk with him. Steve I have to cut this conversation short. No problem. The image on the screen shifted from Captain America at Avengers Tower to the tropics of an island. The machines are leaving Earth. We don't have a specific date but it will be soon so that means Wakanda will be the only superpower nation that openly defies mutant supremacy over the planet. Our war plans for Wakanda have been pushed up ahead of schedule so you and I will be meeting in battle very shortly. I hope you are ready to lose, said Isksa the Unbeaten and the screen went blank. T'Challa rested the Kamoyo on the table and looked across to Didelaine. T'Challa and the demigod were doing an internal audit of the campaign against Bilderberg. It was the first time that T'Challa had used the Cabal's so-called invisible hand and its effectiveness horrified him. Traditional media outlets of record, social media influencers of record, celebrities, leaders of developed nations and leaders of developing nations all parroted the same talking points that T'Challa and Didelaine had scripted at the very same table that they were now doing the audit on. The entire thing was truly too much power for one person to have but T'Challa had it now and he intended to do more good with it. The Machine Nation's subversive techno-supremacy menace had reached a point that hardline action had to be taken. Didelaine was of the opinion that Hydra, Advanced Idea Mechanics and S.H.I.E.L.D. had acquiesced to T'Challa's rulership of the Cabal hence the results of the campaign. T'Challa disagreed because he believed that the people of authority in the vast factions finally bent the knee to hide their scheme to unseat Didelaine and by de facto T'Challa from power. After the audit was completed, T'Challa left the new Switzerland space station that was hidden in Neptune's clouds and the Black Panther returned to Wakanda to prepare for the impending war against Arako.